The original Doom changed the gaming industry forever, and will always be cherished as a true gem of not only the first-person shooter genre, but of all games, ever. Its software's masterpiece was initially released for MS-DOS, but Doom found its way onto everything. A calculator? Done. A printer? Pff, an ATM? <laughs> Child's play. Like any revolutionary product, however, the story of Doom's development is long and rather fascinating. The impact of this initial development sent shockwaves that can still be felt in video game development to this day. And much like within the game itself, there are many secrets and surprises you probably didn't know about. I'm Rich from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 mind-blowing facts you didn't know about Doom. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding. Ding. Done. Number 10. It began development as an Aliens game. Before Doom became Doom, the folks at id Software were working on a game inspired by James Cameron's 1986 sci-fi epic, Aliens. They were such big fans of the film, they even approached 20th Century Fox in hope to secure the rights and actually make an official Aliens title. However, id eventually realised that if 20th Century Fox agreed, a significant portion of the creative freedom that it enjoyed up to that point would have gone straight to Fox, so they ceased negotiations. Programmer and industry legend John Carmack suggested they replace the Aliens with Demons from Hell, and nothing was ever the same again. Number 9. The Origins of the Title Simple and brilliant, the title Doom somehow is exactly what it says on the tin, but do you know the origin of this title? It's an odd one, to say the least. Well, let's go back again to 1986, but this time to The Colour of Money, starring Tom Cruise and Paul Newman. The scene that inspired John Carmack's suggestion of the title takes place in a pool hall, with Cruise's character holding a custom cue case to which a man asks, What you got in there? Cruise opens the case and simply replies, Doom. After Cruz's character completely dominates his opponent in the scene, the name Doom stuck with Carmack as he wanted id to dominate the industry in the same way Cruz did his opponent. Lo and behold, they did. Number 8. The Doom Bible If you ignore Doom 3, and trust me, quite a few people do, then Doom doesn't really have a huge backstory to it. It's an iconic staple of the franchise, made clear in Doom 2016 when the player pushes a monitor away that's about to explain what on earth is going on. However, this originally wasn't going to be the case. During development, designer Tom Hall went above and beyond to write a huge backstory and establish the lore to the original Doom. He called it the Doom Bible. It outlined characters, the setting, the narrative structure, and all sorts, but in the end, the majority of it was left out. Carmack wanted a to-the-point shooter, and all this backstory quite simply bogged it down. Number 7. Heavy Metal Influences The first two Doom titles were infamous for their brilliant and incredibly catchy soundtracks, but were you aware that the majority of these tracks were borderline plagiarized? Many tracks used in the titles were heavily based on 80s and early 90s heavy metal. Alice in Chains, Slayer, and Black Sabbath, to name a few, had chunks of their music lovingly lifted and used against the demons, but despite this, no copyright claims, lawsuits, or cease and desists ever landed on id's doorstep. Probably because these artists loved Doom too much to even care. Number 6. Doom was more popular than Windows Doom was such an incredible success, it was, at one point, installed on more machines than Microsoft's sparkly Windows 95. Bill Gates was so impressed with the title's popularity, he considered buying id Software outright in order to profit from Doom directly, but in the end, he simply signed a deal to produce an official port for Windows 95. At this point in time, Windows wasn't regarded as a solid gaming platform, which sounds ridiculous to us now, but Gates hoped that Doom 95 would show the industry that Windows was a platform devs should be taking note of. He even appeared in the infamous advertisement for Doom 95, superimposing himself into the game. Some pretty well-known names worked on this Doom port for Microsoft, one being our lord and saviour. Number 5, Gabe Newell worked on the Windows 95 port. That's right, before the final boss of PC gaming was head of Valve and revolutionised the digital marketplace with Steam, Gabe Newell worked at Microsoft, developing the first three versions of Windows. Much like pretty much everyone with a PC, Newell was completely infatuated by Doom, and he and a group of engineers set to porting Doom to Windows. Not only was Doom 95 a complete success as we've seen, it also showed Newell the potential of PC gaming, and he subsequently left Microsoft with fellow employee Mike Harrington and founded Valve Software. Then we got Half-Life and Team Fortress and Portal and Counter-Strike, all thanks to Doom. Number 4. Network Overloads Doom was so dang popular, it caused a severe drop in productivity across businesses and college campuses worldwide. Seizing the time being sat at a computer to play Doom across LAN instead of, you know, working, was standard procedure for many. So much so, various local networks slowed down to a crawl when the deathmatches were hot. 
Many businesses and universities eventually enforced set times to allow these impromptu LAN parties to take place, with some even banning Doom outright. Even id Software themselves were struggling under the network pressure of Doom deathmatches. John Carmack even had to break down John Romero's door with an axe to get him to stop playing his own game. Number 3. Marine Doom Did you ever pilot an AC-130 in Modern Warfare 2 and wonder how close it was to the real thing? Have you seen that one episode of NCIS where the US military have kids playing military shooters in order to calculate real-world movements of the actual military? Did you know that the US Marine Corps actually used a modified version of Doom to train recruits? The mod is known as Marine Doom, which pits four players, a leader, two riflemen and a machine gunner, up against a time-sensitive mission. It was used to test cooperation skills, reaction times and the ability to make snap decisions under stress. However, an original title was eventually developed for military training known as America's Army, and Marine Doom was subsequently dropped and released to the public. Number 2. Doom RPG when most people think of Doom, they think of four main titles, 1 and 2 and their various ports, Doom 3 and Doom 2016, but there was in fact a fifth official title that is pretty much always forgotten about. Doom RPG was a title released for mobile phones back in 2005, replacing the first-person shooter model with that of turn-based combat. You level up and gain experience from fighting all the demons from the original games, moving from space to space and turning in 90-degree increments to take on demons and avoid attacks. And unlike the originals, RPG had slightly more focus on story. It was so successful, Doom 2 RPG was released in 2009, and even with those successes, it's still pretty overlooked to this day. Number 1. The Doom 4 That Never Was Doom 2016 is simply brilliant, a reboot done right. However, the original Doom 4 would have been very different, and in hindsight would have struck a major blow to the iconic series. Since Doom 3 released in 2004 and we didn't see a main installment for another 12 years, Doom 4 obviously had a long and troubled development, chopping and changing focus, plot and the location numerous times. The Doom 4 that we know the most about that wasn't Doom 2016 took the form of what seemed like a retelling of Doom 2 Hell on Earth. You were a soldier on Earth fighting back a demon invasion. The scope was pretty huge, but it were concerned about it evolving into what felt like a Call of Duty clone, so they scrapped it entirely and started fresh. Thank goodness they did, as Doom 2016 is quite simply one of the best shooters of the decade. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, aren't you a star? Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe below, and also there's probably more content flowing up above my head, so why not check that out as well? Could be a laugh. Probably. Six out of ten.